Hey, what's up? John Sanmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. Tired of pushy recruiters sending you LinkedIn requests for jobs you have no interest in? Tired of blasting out resumes into the dark? If so, you should check out Hired.com. Hired.com flips job searching on its head by having top employers like Facebook come to you after you fill out one simple application. You also get your own job coach to help you on your next job search. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you at least fill out the application. Just go to Hired.com forward slash simple programmer. And when you get hired with Hired, you'll get double the normal sign-on bonus for using that link. So I've got a question on how to start a project, but, uh, but you need more than yourself to complete it. And this question is from Matt. He says, when it comes to developing a service that will require more than one person to pull off successfully, how would you approach the situation? Uh, he's got a little bit of additional info here. He says, firstly, I'm a huge fan of your work. Very inspiring for us programmers out there and just can't seem to get ahead. My name uh, is Matt and I have a simple question for you. Uh, he, and he goes on to say that uh, he's got a business plan that I believe will make uh, uh, the food industry more customer friendly, but I have a little idea of where to begin looking for advice. Uh, and, he, and he's saying when he's developing the service, it looks like it's going to require more than one person to pull off successfully. How would you approach this situation? Uh, and, and so he says, I could pay someone, but I, I won't get the partner I need. Uh, I have a friend that could help, but they aren't qualified. I could just develop a business plan and sell the idea. So, uh, so he's curious what to do here. So there's a couple things I'm going to say, Matt. So first of all, I'm going to burst your bubble, okay? I, I'm going to point you to a video called Your, your Million Dollar Idea is Worthless. And I, I probably have answered this a few times, but I, I want to set the, the frame first of all that like execution trumps everything else. Like I, there's a million million dollar ideas, okay? I, I, I come up with a million dollar idea every single day, okay? but I don't execute on those million dollar ideas every single day. There's a ton of people that have those. You've got a million million dollar ideas possibly in your head, right? Maybe not a million, but maybe a hundred, okay? That, that could be successful. In fact, you don't even know which ones are million dollar ideas. Sometimes the best ideas are, are, are actually the shittiest ones and sometimes some shitty idea like a, what is it, a Snuggie? Have you seen a Snuggie? The, those little blankets that you put on that have arms in them? That was, a, that was a more than a million dollar idea. That was like a hundred million dollar idea, okay? <clears throat> but, uh, but it's a shit idea, right? <laughs> but execution, execution on that crappy product was 100%. It was great, it was awesome, okay? Not many people can execute like that. So I'm not saying this to be mean. I am saying this to burst your bubble, but I want to set that first because you, what, you, what your problem is, what you're worried about is you're like, you got this golden idea, okay? And you're like, oh gosh, I gotta do something with this golden idea. Should I sell it? I gotta act on this. I gotta get a partner. I gotta build this business. Ah, oh, it's just not that gold of an idea. I don't even know what your idea is, but but it's not right. Someone's already thought of it. I guarantee you, <clears throat> but they haven't executed on it. So you have an opportunity to execute on it. You know, first mover definitely gets gets a benefit there. But again, I'm not trying to just totally crush your dreams. I'm just trying to help you to understand that <clears throat> a couple of things. One to get out of the scarcity mentality. There's, there's an abundance of ideas. Ideas are never going to be the problem. You can come up with, I guarantee, just as good of the idea that you have right now. If you brainstorm for an hour every day, you'll come up with a hundred of them. If you make a list of 10 phenomenal world-changing ideas every single day when you wake up, first thing you do in the morning, spend half an hour and do that, and then you compile them up in a year, you will have the best of the best. You'll have like 10 ideas if you pick your top 10 ideas that could change the world. Anyone could do this. I promise you. It's just, it's just there. Okay, so I, I just want to say this because I want you to get out of the scarcity mentality. I want you to realize that ideas, that all of this is abundant, that there's a million ways to make a million bucks, and that, that's, that uh, you want to have that abundance mindset. Now we can actually get to your question, right? Because you don't want to operate out of that fear of losing something, of missing something out, that FOMO type of, of mentality. It's no good, okay? Instead, what you want to focus on is what makes practical, pragmatic sense. So. In this case, if this is your first business, if you've never built a business before, right? If you're going into entrepreneurship, does it really make sense for you to build a business that's going to require 
multiple people, right, and possibly a big team. Now, if you want to go down this road, okay, there's plenty of people that are going down this road, right? If you look on Hacker News and, and you look in the startup community, right, there's some show, I haven't watched it, called Silicon Valley, right, that whole culture. You can totally do that. I've got a friend, I'm an advisor on a company called Health Hero, and my, my buddy, who's the, the CEO of the company, Anthony, he is totally about that, and he is raising money and raising rounds, and he's built a team and all of this stuff to, to build his dream, his, his business. And I, I'm part of the team. I've helped him and, and advised him on that. But he, he went through a lot of work and effort to do that. So you can go that road. If you're going to really develop on this idea, now, I'll have to tell you that Anthony has been doing entrepreneurial shit, entrepreneurial shit stuff, entrepreneurial shit. <laughs> entrepreneurial stuff uh, for a while, right? So this isn't his first uh, time in the rodeo, okay? Maybe at, at this size. But if you want to go that road, then I would advise if you're going to build something that's going to require multiple people, that is going to be really big, that you do go down that funding startup road, that you build a pr prototype, a proof of concept, you go through and you do the, the whole you know pitch. Well, gosh, I just remembered the book. Uh, it's uh, called How to Pitch Anything. That's a really good book about frame control. I always forget the name of that book. It's by Ori something, but anyway, the really good book. You should read that, of course, if you're going to pitch startups. But you could go that funded route, and that's probably the best thing if you're going to have a company that's going to require multiple people. But that might not be the place that where you want to start, right? Eventually, maybe you want to get there, and you could even save that idea and shelf that idea. But I would highly recommend that you start off on a much smaller entrepreneurial venture, right? So start a small business yourself. Start selling something online, maybe an ebook, maybe a video course, something very small. Build a small piece of software, something that you can build yourself, an app that you can put in the app store. Start there so you can make the mistakes that you're bound to make early on with a low stakes thing that you're not investing a huge amount of time in because I guarantee you that this is not going to go smoothly, right? I mean, I could, I could give you some advice and be like, okay, well, you could find a partner that, that you could work on on this idea, but maybe they're not going to be as committed, right? Or I could say, okay, you could, you could hawk your, your, your car or your guitar and, and get some money and go in debt and pay someone to work on your idea. But your chances of success are very, very low on your first idea. So, and, and, and ideas are not the, the thing that's scarce. Okay, that's that's the key thing here. Is that like figure out long term, pragmatically, practically, where do you want to go, and just assume that ideas will come. You'll have plenty of ideas. Okay, that's that's not the problem. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, start small. Start getting some wins under your belt. Start taking some swings. Start hitting your your teeth on the pavement and and getting the failures out of the way and developing that skill set. And that's that's going to take you wh where to go. And if if you do want to go this other route, if you just want to build this big company, go the start up route, it's a high, high risk, it's a lottery ticket, but you can go that route. You're just going to have to go out there and you're going to have to raise funding. There's plenty of advice and information on that. I'm not an expert on that, but, but I can tell you it's, it's definitely a hard road. But, uh, but I, would either, I would either go that road for, for a business idea like this, or I would shelf that idea and I would start with something smaller, something easier that you're going to be able to accomplish by yourself and start there. All right. Hopefully that helps you. Hopefully I haven't burst all your dreams. <laughs> I, I appreciate you sending the question. And I honestly do wish you the best. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to just bust your chops here. I'm just trying to give you a dose of reality so that uh, you can be as successful as possible. All right, if you like this video, if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button below, and I will talk to you next time. Take care.